That's a pretty one-sided statement. It doesn't leave, it, leave anything out. Paul did great things for God. In fact, he said, I can do all things, didn't he? But how did he do that? Through Christ who strengthened him. And he talked about his ministry in 2 Corinthians 3 and 4 and along in there. You know, our sufficiency of God. We're, we're not, I'm not sufficient for any of this. I, here I am engaged in this ministry of life that brings eternal life to people. Who's sufficient for this? You know, give me a break. I can't do this. Who can do this? I'm just a man. But he says, my sufficiency is of God. God's given me this. And you think about uh, Romans 12, and it talks about how, how we're different. We're members of, the, of one body, but what are we to do? It says we're to, we're to exercise ourselves based on what? The measure of faith that God has given to every man. Where did the faith come from? God gave it. And I tell you, God wants to, wants to get involved in our needs and our situations, but we need to come to the place where we just come to Him with the same sense of total need and dependence upon Him, knowing we can't do it, knowing we don't deserve it, knowing all, you know, acknowledging all those things, but, but being willing to come to God until He gives us some kind of a word of faith, some kind of a witness, some, where He just takes maybe something that's in this book, but it jumps off the page and it becomes real, it becomes a living, present tense word of faith to our hearts. Now we've got something that we have the choice about what are we going to do with this word that he's given are we going to just sort of reason it away or are we going to obey what it says and take our stand against it we're going to make a choice with our will are we going to believe god or are we going to continue to believe all the negative voices and all the the, the boisterous storm that we're in I tell you, I want to be one like this man. I want to be one who says to God, I choose to believe you. I don't have any basis in myself. I don't have any basis in my feelings or my circumstances to, to do such a ridiculous thing. But I believe you, Lord. But oh, in my belief, I feel the weakness. I feel the attacks upon my, my, my very ability to do this. Oh, God, if you don't help me, this isn't going to do any good. I need you to help me and come and be my faith. How did Paul live? He says, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. How are we, I started to quote this a while ago. I can't remember if I did or not, but how are we saved? We're saved by grace through faith. But what about the faith? That, not of yourselves. Well, where does it come from? It's the gift of God. And why is that? So that no man can boast. Not of works, so that no man can boast. I'll tell you what, God has got all the faith that any of us ever need. And I don't have any of it myself. I mean, I can think of a thousand situations I could be thrown into where I, I just have to throw up my hands and say, Lord, I just don't have faith for this. Well, God's not wanting to make actors out of us and pretenders. If we don't have faith, just say, Lord, I don't have faith. I, I want to I believe you. I, I, I want to trust you, but Lord, you're going to have to help me here. I'll tell you, God prizes an honest heart. Amen. Just tell him where you're at. Amen. And don't pretend I'm strong, I'm this, I'm that. You're not either. You're not any, not any more than anybody else. We do that because we think, well, everybody else is up here. And I'm Poor me, I'm down here, and I just got to pretend to be one of them. When they're all doing the same thing. God, help us just to get honest, to realize where our help comes from, and to say, Lord doesn't despise any of that. He loves you right where you're at. That's the whole point of salvation, is to lift us out and to give us a hope. It doesn't depend upon you or me or our strength or our faith or our anything. We just got to cry out to a God who is able to step into an impossible situation and do something for people who are willing to choose. Lord, I choose to believe what you said. I don't have the strength. I know that I haven't got the wind behind it to take to, to drive my boat in the direction of where I want to go, but I'm just trusting you for the wind, Lord. Help me. Help me overcome my unbelief. Oh, I'll tell you, there's a secret in this thing. And so when Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the evil spirit. 
You deaf and mute spirit, he said, I command you to come out of him and never enter him again. Boy, the Lord did something really unusual in a sense. Didn't always add that and don't ever enter him again. But in this case, the Lord, the Lord led Jesus, the Father led Jesus to, to say, don't you ever bother this young boy again. You're gone. This is not your home anymore. You can't have him. Oh, praise God. God did something very special for a man that we would have, you know, a lot of religious people would have looked at this guy and despised him. But that's that religious reasoning, religious opinion. God, deliver us. That's what keeps us in a spirit of unbelief. We have tried to figure things out, and it always comes out. We are always, always come out on the losing end. Instead of just coming to God and saying, God, I need you. Help me. Give me a word of faith. And then what do you do? Then you choose. I choose to believe what your word says, but God, I know I can't do this in myself. Help me. Help me, Lord. Come and be my faith. Work in spite of all the weakness that I, that I feel. You know, that's kind of what that song was about. Man struggling with guilt. The, the enemies just continue to hurl accusations. You're this, you're that. And the Lord says, I've cast your sins behind you as far as the east is from the west. So what are you going to go by, the wind and the storm, or are you going to go by what God said? And, of course, that was, that was the rescue in the song. I'm going to choose to believe what you say, Lord. That's going to be my, I'm not going to go by how I feel about this. I'm, my feelings are going to go all over the map. I'm going to go by your word. That doesn't change. I need something that doesn't change because everything about me and my circumstances changes all moment, momentarily. And so the spirit shrieked and convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. Okay, so we got the situation taken care of. Now the disciples are wondering, what in the world was this all about? After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, why couldn't we drive it out? He said, this kind come, come only out by prayer. And some, some manuscripts add the word fasting. 